k complex number said one is a plus b i where i squared equals minus one and here's what we're going to do we're going to say that this is the point uh, three one so this is the point three plus one i that means your a value is three and your b value is one now the image under reflection in the real axis the real axis is this black line here and reflection means it's an image directly below the same distance across so this will be the complex number three minus one i which is the point three minus one so that's three and that's minus one the angle formed when joining uh, z1 and z2 so this is a z2 here and basically if i join the two of these together i create an angle like in a triangle i create this angle uh, theta here now i can break that theta up into two angles where theta equals 2x okay it says find cos theta correct to one decimal place so here's what we're going to do this here means zero zero okay and here's what i'm going to do i'm going to find out that x i'm going to use a right angle triangle like so i'm going to use the angle x okay because it's the same on the way up and the way down because it's the same size it's three across and one up each time so it's three across and one up and if you're doing the downward angle it would also be three across and one down so i'm after this angle x here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use Pythagoras theorem cos x equals uh, so cos x will equal adjacent over over hypotenuse okay so here's what we're going to do i'm going to do Pythagoras theorem to figure out the hypotenuse such so that h squared equals one squared plus three squared h squared equals 10 and h equals square root of 10. okay and what i can find out now is that this is the square root of 10. The square root of 10 is the length of this okay so technically z1 z1 the length of it so the modulus of z1 is root 10 because that's what that means it means the length of the line okay that means that this one's also root 10 as well okay now i got cos x is 3 over root 10 and x on its own is cos inverse 3 over root 10 okay so here's what we're going to do we're going cos inverse 3 over root 10 we're going to make sure we're in degree mode on the calculator and what we're going to get is 18.435 now what we know is that theta is 2x so we're going to multiply this answer by 2 and we'll get theta equals 36.87 so theta equals 2x is equal 36.87 degrees and the question asks me for cos theta so cos theta is the same thing as cos 36.87 and this in turn is 0.7999 otherwise known as 0.8 and that is 0.8 right there cool so a is 3 1 c and d okay so we know a is 3 b is 1 C is 3 and D is minus 1 according to what's in this box right here. Okay. Uh, theta is 36, sorry, cos theta is 0.8. Okay. 
Okay. Now Z1 and Z2. If you ask for ever ask for the modulus, Z1 is a uh, three plus one i. So the modulus of Z1 is basically you get the real part and you square it. You get the imaginary part and square it. We already know knew that its length was root ten. Likewise with Z2, which is three minus one i. What you're saying is the modulus or length of Z2 from the origin is going to be three squared plus minus one squared, and that is also root 10. Then from here on in, it's a show me question. So Z1 multiplied by Z2 is root 10 multiplied by root 10. The uh, plus theta part is the point eight we got in the last question. Okay, and then after that, do AC multiply by BD. So AC is 3 times 3. And B times D is 1 times minus 1. Put all this into the calculator. You'll get 8 for this. And this will be 9, take away 1. And then finally you get 8 equals 8. And lo and behold, that's your answer.